history in the making. Healing to be awakened. Yeah, you are the star of your story at Let's Talk and Grow with Miss Rushumba. You know, my son is born on a Wednesday. Seen and felt because they are the largest group. Mm. And so my you, we got your back. No, we're not perfect. So now you know, it's time to grow at Let's Talk and Grow with Miss Rushumba. Let the healing begin. Audience, we are back. We are back. Segment two with Mr. Lewis, young, gifted, and black. Yes, yes. He's young, he's gifted, and he's black, and he belongs to us. Yes. And he's rebuilding a culture. So hopefully one day you see him out there, huh? Showing you what he meant when he said that this day. Yes. So, hey, do you want to share a little of your talent with me today? I definitely can. Okay, so let's see. Our brother's going to share with us a little something today. Got you. This is what we own. We changed it all around. Running more than just two companies. I'm versatile. It started in my mind, but I could see it now. No more talking about it, I could show you how. We used to want their jobs, now we create our own. We was blind to the facts, but we see what's going on. Family ties, healthy lives, we gotta keep it strong. No more debt, we must invest, it's been way too long. I used to spend it all, look how I'm saving money. The way I used to live, no longer working for me. I could make a cloudy day look like it's sunny. Now we got a reason to be acting funny. Why should I feel like I don't deserve the best? They seemed to love me more when I was thinking less. Mm. Had to strategize my life like it's a game of chess. Every note just helped me find a way to yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hey, you know, that is why, folks, I had to make sure I stopped him immediately after he was done. Huh? Yeah, I had to stop him because that brings joy to my heart and a sense of tears to my heart because I know we belong here and I just didn't know how it was going to look for the future for the children. So I'm so happy with what you're doing and so proud, as, not just as a mother, but a grandmother, yes. you know, so keep it going. <laughs> You're an African-American young man. Because I have a lot of my audience, and some of them are in Africa. Lately, you all haven't been tuning in. I'm wondering about you. You know, I went to Ghana a year ago this time. I was coming back from Ghana, and, you know, I, I spent three weeks there. And then went again in February, which was just amazing. And um, it's a lovely place. It's a special place. It is one of the most uniquest places in Africa, because Africa has 54 countries. That be the first one to have gotten its independence mm. from our colonizers. Right. And so, what I love about it is the people. They're authentic, they're kind, they're generous, and they are in need of some of the things that you are sharing here today. They're on there already. Believe me, it's not like they don't know. They do know. But when I see you, I see them. <laughs> when I see them, I see you. And so, um, what, what's, what's your thought about the, the, the brothers and sisters on that side? Have you thought about what the future would look like? Are you going to be America bound for it? What, what, tell me a little bit about that being a young, born African American. I definitely want to uh, go to Africa and experience that. Yes. I definitely want to you know, trade and, and start, uh, you know, find a way to do business out there as yes. much as I can, even move in my music and my movement out there. I definitely would want to move out there. You know, I don't want to stay here forever. Yeah. I feel like it's, this is no good. This, this country is going to come to a point of just destruction. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I just don't feel like, mm -hmm. um, this is where I want to end things, you know what right. I mean? So I definitely want to do a lot more traveling. Yes. yes. And the fact that you're raising beautiful, powerful, intelligent children 
you know, when, they, when it's time for them to really spread their wings, you know, America is going to be quite limited. Yeah. You know, because a lot of people don't know that the continent of Africa, North America, fits in there three and a half times. That's how huge it is. Right. You see, and you talk about, you know, being a healthy eater, and the earth there is so rich. The soil is like black or red. Very powerful. So, you know, we'll talk later because I know folks there. <laughs> and that's what I'm, I'm excited to yes. do that. I'm excited to go there and eat. You yes. Know, and just experience the culture, the dancing, the, yes. the, 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 just the, just how, yeah, just how they're, how they're doing things. Yes. You know? And you know what, one thing struck me about the time I was there, you know, the food is good, you know, the land is beautiful, but the people, you see, because oftentimes we run into our people here and you can see the pain and, and the suffering and the weight of life of living in America on them. Right. You know, because they will look through you, they will look around you, and, you know, and they will not see you. You know, it's like you're invisible or you are their enemy. Right. And, but it was like the total opposite in Ghana. You know, when you see someone, everyone smiles as if <laughs> they're your family. Right, you know, right. I, I, there was a time I'm in traffic and we're moving into this one lane and there is about five lanes merging into one and we're all just taking our time and looking at each other and people were literally, literally waving at you and I'm waving at them <laughs> and yet we're fighting for that one space right. in the road. Out here, it'd be a, hum a whole bunch of honking and, and hey. middle fingers and... And show the Glock. Right. And show the Glock. It's like, you better move back. Definitely. So, you know, um, it, it, is, it is really uh, a testament that, you know, the fact that we are the group, the descendants of the group that did not choose to leave and to be taken away in captivity and to be subjugated, given different names, uh, given different names, beaten down and built a culture and then forgotten. And yet we still here. And like you being young, gifted and black, to still even understand that through it all, they want to rewrite your history, wipe it out, critical race theory, and still you know. Yes. Still you know. So, audience, it's in the spirit. It's in our DNA. Right. You can't wipe it away. So it's important to just get quiet in the morning and, and get still. And like you say, listen inward. You know, because I, I want you to be talking to these young men that are out there that if they see you, they want to hurt you because you're rising. You know, that's one of the dangerous things we have in this country is that the competition should be against who we were yesterday. Right. And instead it's about against each other, you know, and, and that's, we know how that could come about when you listen to the wrong story, the wrong vibe. So you don't watch TV or none of that. You create your own medium, correct? I do. Elaborate on that if you would. Yes, so, you know, I, I do a lot of work from music videos for myself to working with other people, my clothing line, and then just writing music. You know, I really don't have time. And then my children, you know, yes. I really don't have time to watch TV, to be honest with right. you. And there's nothing on there for me that I feel like is, unless I feel like I'm getting motivated watching something, yes. then I'm, I spend my time on there. But other than that, I'm steadily creating. Yes. So, uh, that's, that's what I spend my time doing. And that's what a young, gifted, and black, African-American man should do. Create. Right. Definitely. What else is there to do but create? Right. That's your, your creation that you're wearing, huh? Yes, it's God mode and goddess mode. God mode and goddess mode. Yes, yes. So when you claim it, you are it. You become right. it. And you teach it. Is that popular? Are a lot of people to... Take it oh, on yes. to that? Definitely, definitely. I've, I've been selling this and giving it out yes. for some years now. Wow. So. And another thing, too, that I just yeah. wanted to touch on, too, when you said yeah. when you claim it, 
that's that's who you are mm -hmm. and it's true because it's like when we claim to be everything else um it's okay for us to do that like when we, when we want to claim to be gangsters and when we want to be claimed to be you know n words or yeah. you know whatever we Play, uh... yeah whatever we call ourselves that we got from the streets or uh you know from the european we, it's okay for us to claim that, but if if I want to claim I'm God, if I want to claim I'm a king, then people look at you funny, you know, like, like, hold on, like, what? What are you talking about? How are you you're not God? Yeah, you know what I mean? like, exactly. You're not this, you're not that, and it's like, they they want us to be so low thinking, you know, in a low vibration of, of thought of ourselves, um, like, I'm not who created me, yeah. like, we're not who created yeah. us, you know? I'm glad that you've elaborated on that, because... It's like the system wants it to, in order for those folks that have brought us here in captivity to feel good about themselves, someone has got to feel low. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the yin and yang. You have to have the low subjugated mindset around them for them to feel, because it's not like they could elevate very high. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think they've reached their maximum. <laughs> You know, but in order for them to appear to be even higher, they have to subjugate the original hum, hum, humans. They have to tell you that your worth is not good. Because when you do show you're great, they have to manipulate it and use it for their gain and they pay you little. Yeah. So, you know, it's so important that we understand we could not have lasted those 400 years and 270 years of the worst uh, atrocity in humanity and still be here gifted and doing the work is something in our DNA. Definitely is. You know, and so I, I am... That alone, when I wake up, that alone gets me through because I no longer let the outward define me. It's an inside job. <laughs> Inside the body, inside the mind, inside the home, and all the things that you do to build on that. Right. Would you agree with that? Yes, it's yes. an inside job. It definitely is. That's very important, like you say, the, the home, the environment, the mindset, you know, uh, the music. You know, I was just talking about uh, our oral traditions yes. and what we told ourselves and what we continuously yes. tell ourselves through you know, the fairy tales and the traditions yeah. and all that stuff. It's like, we have to change a lot of that, you know. Even what my children watch on TV, like I'm, I'm really um, strict on them about what they're watching, you know, and what they're listening to. And I'm like, I'm, if I'm listening to, they, they could be watching a cartoon and I'm listening, I'm like, nah, that don't sound empowering. Yeah. Turn that off, you know, yes. I'm like, let's find something else to watch that I feel like is gonna make, is gonna, you know, uplift you, yes. you know, not just, you know, you're just becoming some emotional, uh, reckless, Responder. yeah, yeah, you know, yeah to that's, what, that's what is a lot on these, these cartoons and stuff, yeah. you know, so, yeah, it's definitely important that we have the right environment, um, around, and I know it's hard because of life, you know, because of everything that's going on, the things that we have to do, capitalism, we gotta work, mm -hmm. we gotta, mm -hmm. we gotta find, we gotta, you know, keep on, making a way yeah. and it's like sometimes we get tired and it's like I just I just want to I just want to take a break you yeah. know and it's like nah but we got to keep going yes. so um, even having that battle with people that I know you know of, of just like let's let's not be distracted let's let's continue to work yes. you know sometimes that's even a battle for me you yes know, keeping people motivated and, and uh, stuff like that so it's like sometimes I just gotta be to my lonesome you know and I like what you've said in a couple of years. Number one, what you're doing is controlling the narrative right. for your children. Yes. You're saying, I'm not going to let just any and anybody into their minds and their spirit. If you can control it, you will. Mm -hmm. And then the motivation of your peers, the ones that are working with you, that, that's so important. And, you know, oftentimes that's what the school has done. It's omitted the ones that were under the whip, mm -hmm. their story. That would have been a motivator for us if we knew there was generations, the ones that dealt with the ship across the sea, the ones that dealt with standing on the cell and blocks to be sold, uh, the ones that dealt with the rape and the abuse, the ones that did with you know, 
know, Jim Crow, uh, segregation, all the way till now. If we remembered all those different generations, we would say, tired? Me tired? Look at what I got going on right now. As a matter of fact, it's a disrespect. If we decide that it's, let me go get my nails done, let me just be all about me, beauty, and, and I like looking good, don't get me wrong, because that's who we are, royal. But, you know, we must be doing the, wrong, the, the, the right job, like, hey, like what I'm doing. So when you show me that you appreciate it by thumbs up, I may not do it perfect for because I'm not a born journalist and you know MSNBC and the CNNs of the world. But you know my journey here has told me what I'm capable of doing. So that's why I'm showing up courageous, defining and rewriting the story because of the shoulders I stand on. So that's why he's God mode, huh? And that's why I'm goddess mode. <laughs> Rewriting the culture. Right. So, um, yeah, I'm so happy that you're doing what you're doing. That's why you're young, gifted, and black. Definitely. You make my generation very proud. Thank you. You make my generation proud. You make, you, I'm telling you, just seeing how you move and how strong you are with your words is very inspirational and motivational to me. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. You know, one of the things I've often said that, you know, I learned in school was to read. You know, because sometimes what they give you to read may not always be the greatest, but if you learn how to read, because that's one thing they didn't want us to know is how to read. Because then we could understand how we got here and even clearer. Our spirit will guide us, but it will also guide you to the books that, and you will sit with those great people of time and long gone. Like um, Hubert Henry Harrison, When Africa Awakes, I think is the book he had written back in the 1940s. And in that book was a poem that he wrote the black, the black man's burden. A lot of people don't know about that poem. And many years ago, my son, I had him in piano, classical piano, because see, we could tell, we could define what we want our children to do. You know, oftentimes they want them to shoot ball, chase ball, be a ball. <laughs> you know, but when you really design their minds now to open it up to to think great, then you could say, okay, you're going to be the best classical pianist. You're going to be this, 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 this. Right. And they'll believe you, you know, and they'll do it. But the challenge that they face is when they go out in society, the, the ones that aren't there yet, mm -hmm. that becomes the, the problem that nick away at their ego that they may want to hide what they do. But I say all of this to say, I had my son in piano for 10 years, from four and a half to 14. Uh, five of those years classically trained and we used to go amongst our people in the community quite some time and and um, th at that time we would do uh, he would play a nice piece at seven eight nine age and up to 12 on and then he'll come around and grab the mic and do a 15 paragraph poem mm. a seven paragraph poem in this case he did the black man's burden mm. powerful an answer to uh, um, Kipling's The White Man's Burden mm. that was written in the late 1800s. Wow. The White Man's Burden about how it took so much energy to hold us into place. Wow. That's a classic too. I, I recommend that. It's on one of my shows I had done it. But, and then he did Let America Be America again by Langston Hughes. Yeah. 17 paragraphs. A young youth with understanding of what he's seen. So I, I just wanted to give kudos to you because when you raise the children like you're raising, when you say go and do this, they won't say, ah, oh, they will do it because they trust you Definitely. and they believe you in you. Mm -hmm. And you've set them up that they could show who they really are. Because right. audience, I don't know if you've heard of Dr. Amos Wilson, but you know, that brethren there, he's an ancestor now, but he's written the books that talk about who we are and who our children are. The abilities of our children, we're not even tapping into it. 
Instead, we're letting the system tap into it. Yeah, we're throwing it away. Throwing it away. With TV, with games, yes. with school. You know, it's just like we letting them take our their creativity and put it in, in the TV. In the TV. Know? Or use it for their benefit on the basketball court. Huh? On the football court. Anywhere that they could entertain and get billions. Because, you know, if they're going to give you millions, they're getting billions. Otherwise, they won't want to see you. Even if in jail, they're making money. In prison, they're making money. So we've always been an asset to another people. We now must be an asset to ourselves. Definitely. And I, I feel like my children are my biggest assets. Yes. Um, and that's part of rebuilding the culture. Like, for me, I feel like for us to rebuild, it has to be a physical hand job as far as uh, building. Yes. You know, I want to get, I'm getting my little ones into carpentry yes. and growing food and sewing, you know, all the things that we can really do to have our own and not have to be going out and asking. Yes. It's like, no, we're going to get our own land, yes. we're going to build our own stuff, that's we're right. going to grow our own food, you know, and that's... My children know that's the mission. That's right. Definitely. That's right. <laughs> wow. And you will do it. Will and you do it. are doing it. I am. And they see me doing it. Yes. That's why I feel like it'll be easier for them to, like you said, they're not going to question it because they're going to be like, well, my dad was doing that's it right. all this time. You know, I've seen him doing it. Yes. So black men, those that have children out there, you know, we may look at our past and say, oh, it wasn't perfect, it was fragmented, but in your time, you could make it right. Right. In your time, you could make it right. Because once you say you want to do it, do what is right, the universe aligns with you. Yes. That's why we're still here. The universe will align with you and you will get through. So trust, have faith. Belief. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about love. Relationship between women and uh, men. But you know what? I'm going to pause on that because I, I think that while we're going to make it in the last segment, we're going to close out on that because he has children. Huh? Yeah, he has children. So one of the things we've recognized in our community is, you know, the, the, the effects of the system on our relationship, black man and black woman. Definitely. And sometimes we can't seem to reach, you know, that balance at the same time. Right. You know, because and then we must ask who benefits when we are part and tear each other down? Who benefits? And who really benefits when we fight through and stay together? Who benefits? So this is segment two. Let's talk and grow um, with Mr. Lewis. And uh, we're going to come back on the other side on the number three, the last segment. So please, thumbs up, share. And we'll be right back. Yes, sir. <laughs> So now you know, it's time to grow at Let's Talk and Grow with Ms. Rushumba. Let the healing begin. <laughs>